for everyone to join. So um, let's kick it off. Today is October 20, a year flies. It was very fast. Um, this is the book club, uh, CNCF Kubernetes book club. Um, you can find us in Slack. Um, the channel is Kubernetes book club. We follow the code of conduct from the CNCF. So uh, please follow that. If you are present, add your suggestion uh, for attendance, uh, put your company name, or organization name uh, that um, for some people that's that's useful, for example, telling their boss or manager or coworker or like uh, getting credits or that you're doing extra work, right? To study uh, or extra um, uh, learnings after work. Um, so you can share that uh, and they can find your name multiple times in here and this dog is a running dog. Um, so that's, that's the only reason we ask people put their uh, company and also if um, someone wants uh, uh, sometimes companies are so large um, and you find another person from the same company attending here then then you can also expand your network um, so we are doing the ace ace in the ck exam uh, by chad um, crower uh, he usually join us today he cannot um, and, that, and that's okay it's like too many too many sessions back to back um, these sessions are being recorded. Um, and then for news, um, I only have one. Like I found that there's a 35% off um, um, coupon hack 35 until October 24th. So the next next four days. And you can buy bundles or you can just buy uh, the exam, I believe, or exam bundles. Uh, so there's different. Um, uh, things that you can buy. So if you're thinking of getting the, taking the exam, go ahead and, and grab that 35% off. Um, they might be, they might do another one during, um, uh, Thanksgiving time. Um, but this one is 35 now chapter five. Um, we usually use the life book. Um, so we put the link here. So we are in chapter five. We have done Kubernetes, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, I, went, I forgot to ask any any news that people want to share. What's going on in cloud native, or um, other than I, my my next thing is KubeCon in a Chicago. I think the dates are November six to the ninth. Um, uh, CNCF. I don't know if they're gone already, but CNCF was doing. I think I, I tweeted. CNCF was giving 200 tickets free for in-person for people that have financial need or lost their job recently. Uh, so see if you're uh, qualified and you're going to get a free ticket uh, to Chicago, you can apply and see if you're, there's still tickets left. Um, and then uh, somebody's asking, uh, adding that, oh, Cloud, Cloud Native Rejects is the Saturday and Sunday before um, of that. And then for uh, CFP are open for in two days for KubeCon. Oh, for Q KCD or yes. Trash. Okay. Yeah, CFP is still open, which I need to apply. Uh, open for KubeCon um, Europe, EU 2024. So CFP, CFP is open and uh, also registration, I believe. Uh, but CFP is open for that. So let's do this chapter, running applications in Kubernetes. Um, I have the chapter here. Um, basically, we're going to go over scaling applications, um, like how do you scale pods? How do you roll updates? How you do how rolling updates work and how do you roll back? Uh, exposing deployments. Uh, to create services and then maintenance tasks um, for Kubernetes. I think it's around the node uh, to coordinate and drain a node. Those are the type of things you get asked in the in the exam. So let me set up my uh, kind cluster. I think I deleted it, uh, or maybe I have it up. So let me check. If I do kind get or cluster get. Cluster get, cluster get is, I think cluster get, cluster. It's get clusters. 
scat clusters with an S. What's the problem with cluster category? Okay. So I have one there. And then if you, um, I want to double check. I think I created a multi node one. And if you want the cube config, you're not sure because I always have my uh, thing is you can do export. So you can do go to the back to the top. Maybe if this is, I'll make it half the screen to see if this works. Let me do this like this. Maybe put that down here. Uh, kind export. I think you do cube config. It will do what it needs to. So it set the cube CTO context to kind kind, which is the if you have cube CTX, I think I don't think they put the CTX in the exact inside environment. Uh, but I should have. Let me see how many nodes I have. K K is set up, so you can use K uh, as an alias. So uh, this example has kind worker and kind worker two. So I think we can use this one. It's one twenty six, so we should be good to go. Let me see. Something's running here that we should delete. Um, there's a pod called init from last time. So let me delete that. If you're in a, in a so this is a, I guess I, I'm, um, I like to pitch with trivia. So it looks like we have one pod. If I do get pod and I'm running, I want to delete it the fastest way um, because uh, in the exam you make try something and you want to delete the pod and you, the, you don't want to waste time waiting for it. You can do a K delete pod, um, the name of the pod, you can put trace, period, zero, and then dash, dash, force. I think it's true. Wait, confirmation. Oh, OK. I think it's dash, dash, force. I think it's gone already. OK, get pods. Gone. Um, so it says delete it. If not, you needed to wait there for the cubelet to give it enough time after the signal, sick term signal, and then the timeout of the sick term signal, and then just kill it. Um, so if you're in a hurry, you can use those flags. And as always, I think out of completion is, is set up. So you don't even have to remember, um, to type everything up. So I think we are, we don't have pods. So. If we go back um, to the text, maybe maybe I should do this side by side. I don't know if it's better. What people think? Maybe close your side panel, your table of contents. Ah, good. Right, and I have more space, right? Like that. <laughs> Um, so the, the first one is to, um, modify running applications. Um, typically we're going to be using a, a deployment. Um, so if you have uh, something already deployed and you want to, um, change it. So it starts with this example of, I don't know if, um, copy pasting from the book is something. Oh, actually works. Okay. So in this case, I'm um, to create a deployment, you will do a create deploy Apache, and this is an Apache server, and I'm putting three replicas. So you can do that. If you're in the exam and you don't remember if what is the short short name for um, a, a resource, you can do K API resources. For example, and then this column here, the second column will give you the the short name for for those things. So as you can see, uh, deployments equals deploy, and also you start doing Control L. You can do it and just grab grab for deployments. I don't know. That's that's a tip. Um, so it's deploy. So that that name comes from the from the um, type. So if we, we have three pods, so we do get pods, just give it enough time to run also uh, down in the image. Uh, three applications, um, 
and you want to scale the application, uh, change basically the replica count on the deployment, you can like K edit, you can do K edit the deployment, right? Or you can just use the K scale uh, deployment and then change uh, the name of the deployment, which is Apache. And again, in the exam, always use autocomplete. So I'm using tab in here because that's much faster. So, um, and then I want to do dash dash. So autocomplete also works with flags. So if you can do dash dash R and do dash uh, do tab, it will autocomplete replica. So you don't have to waste time on mistyping or doing typos or anything. Just use auto completion even for the flags. And we want to increase the number of replicas for this application from three to to five. We would do that. Um, and curious um, if you want to know like what's under the hood. If you like set it to six, you can do the dash v six, um, and then you will see like what is the HTTP request that is done to um, to patch. So in this case, as you can see here, it's a patch HTTPS. This is not something just to clarify. You don't have to know. <laughs> you don't have to know this for the exam. But if you are, I guess, if you're here, you are a Kubernetes nerd, like all the ones, all the people here, and you want to learn like what's under the hood. Dash V is something that you can see like what is the what is the HTTP. HTTP request being done. So in this case, as you can see, it's a, it's a patch request against the deployment, the default namespace deployment, the name of the deployment, and then it's slash scale. So as you can see, you're, you're, you're doing a patch against scale. Scale is a sub resource. Um, so you're not patching the main spec. You're, you're patching the slash scale, which is a re sub resource, which you can also have unique RBAC settings. You can you can have a person be able to read only a sub resource, or maybe read the whole thing and only write a sub resource. So slash read scale is a sub resource that actually you can have control over that that path um, to in RBAC. Just just a little bit of background there. That makes sense uh, to some. Uh, is anyone following along? I'm just curious. That's, yes. Go ahead. Yes, keep going. Yeah, that's that's great. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's the section of like um, if you have if you get a question about like uh, we have an application and we have to scale it up or scale it down. Actually, no correction. I I do that mistake often. You want to scale it out or you want to scale it in means horizontally scale them. Right. Have multiple copies. Scaling out, scaling up and down is scaling. The amount of resources like CPU and memory, right? And that's something that I need to get better at. Like people say up and down when they met in and out. Um, I think I learned that a long time ago. Um, so the other thing that you can do or me ask in the exam is to uh, set the image. So here's a shortcut. If I want to uh, change the, for example, I want to go from, are you, people see my, what I'm highlighting in the book? Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, so if the image is 25454 and I want to change to a different tag, um, in this case, Alpine, uh, again, you can do kubectl edit, uh, change the deployment, or you can just set an image. So like I'll do this one, K set image. So also a very useful command. So if you do K set dash dash help, I don't know if it's, uh, we have sent this uh, before. Um, set has multiple things that you can set. You can set environment variables in a pod template. You can set an image. You can set the resources like requests and limits for memory and CPU. You can set the selector. You can even set the service account and subject. I'm trying to think what would this be for? Maybe these are for row bindings in a row binding or cluster row binding. So this is another short way uh, of changing the configuration. And this all, is all imperative, which is kind of like not the best practice, but um, in, in an imperative way, you can change settings on the deployment or pod template or 
this aspect without like making a mistake in the exam of typing something in the YAML or fighting with Vim and things like that. So set is something that you can quickly uh, change a deployment. So that's another tip on the exam to save you time from like trying to do K edit or get the YAML, put it in a file, open the file, edit the file, and then apply it back. Using set is sometimes like takes you like two seconds versus like trying to do all those things and then making a mistake between them. Um, and any, anyone has a comment on that? Is that make, does that make sense? Those are tips for the exam. Yeah. Uh, Faisa says to, to elaborate more. So, uh, so this is, uh, so let's go to the example. So, um, instead of if, if, if the question in the exam says like, I have a deployment with this image version to HTT with, I have a deployment with a certain image and you want, you need to update the deployment with a new image. Then one option is you can do K okay, get deployment um, HTTP. Uh, I think this is what is the name Apache, right? That's old YAML, and put that in a file. Edit the file, the image line, right? You can go into the image line, change this line, save the file, and it gives it to apply. That would take you a long time. So instead, you can do the command that is here, which is K set. I'm not going to even copy it, right? Because we need to practice instead of copying you need to practice on doing the typing in your keyboard and choosing the shortcut because in the exam um right you don't have the answer to copy but then you would do okay set right and then put image i am tab auto complete image uh deploy um is not auto completing but it's deploy or deployment and then what's the name of the deployment is apache I don't know what autocomplete is um, not working here, but I'll set it to HTTPD Alpine. Let's see if that will work. Or maybe I mean I made a mistake. A set image deploy Apache. I made a typo, right? Apache. Yeah. So it got updated, right? So if you do something like this, um, it's, it's much faster. So um, if we do K okay, get pods, uh, you can see some of the pods um, are new. So seven seconds, right? It was running for a few minutes. I mean, maybe three minutes. So this, all these pods now are new and running the new image. So if you get asked to do that, then use K set. Um, the other thing is um, maintenance or that uh, talking about abstractions, every time you have a deployment, so if you do, uh, let me see, um, if you do K get, K get deploy, right? You have a deployment that has a pod template, but between the, the deployment and the, the deployment and the pods, there's a replica set. So you can do K get, and you can see this with K get all, which is a fastest way to see it. As you can see here, there's a, a replica sets at the bottom. And as you can see, there's two replica sets. The one at the top is nine minutes ago. That was like when I created a, the deployment with the original image. And then this one is the second one, a replica set um, with the uh, that has the template now modified with the image. So the replica set is the one that is aware of the pods the deployment is aware of a pod template that is given to a replica set, but the deployment doesn't know anything about uh, pods, um, if that makes sense. So the replica set Apache 557, the nine minutes old one, that's zero, 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 that is the one that was changed from, and so it doesn't delete it, but it just makes a new one when we use set? Yeah, because if the new one, I made a mistake and that was not the image, how do I roll back, right? Yeah. So there's a revision associated and then a replica set associated. So you can go back to that. And then also there's um, our garbage collection, collection uh, configuring Kubernetes um, that then it will collect, it would not have like infinite, like forever keeping track of that. Um, but then you can, you can go back. And also you need like 
two replica sets uh, for running updates, right? Because you are um, managing like two replica sets at the same time when you're doing a running update as you uh, bring up pods in the new replica set and shut down pods in the old one. So, uh, but it's not it's not deleted. That's that's a good question. Um, and and yeah, you can expect them, right? You can do k okay, get uh, replica set and then put the the number here. Um, that's also something like I encourage. Um, well, this one opens VS Code because I have configured with VS Code. Okay, edit because um, I like colors. Um, in here, you will see the template with the image, right? The two two four fifty four how originally created. The other replica set will have the other one. A replica set have a template, right? It's similar to a deployment. Um, so, good question. So the next thing is um, talking about um, what is the next one? Talking about the the pod and the deployment uh, to prove that this from two different commands. Um, just comparing like the the, the deployment spec. Uh, this template section is what you get into the pod. So it's the same information that it's a, it's a template. So it's the template is used to create the pod. So that information will go. So it will go there. I don't think there's much that they're uh, talking here about unless I think it's doing the same thing or just, just showing you that you can create the things in um, declarative, I'm guessing. So we can we can do it. Uh, so this is creating nginx and nginx, and I created a pod.yaml. So if we do pod.yaml, um, oh wait, my bad. So k k run. Um, I think we at some point we changed k run or capacity to run to only do pods. Um, and then if you want to create a deployment, you will use k create deploy. So I think it's just showing showing how to create a create a pod. Um, so it's, it, they ask you to create a pod, you can create a pod, or you can create a a uh, a deployment in here. And just comparing the two, um, just showing you that. The template section. So there's a template section in here. That is what goes into the pod. So the deployment has a template section. So anything inside the template is what goes into the pod. Um, yeah, I think we can we can skip this. Um, there's no much uh, testing here. Let's go to the next section uh, of scaling. Like you can you can change the scale. Uh, instead of set, you can just uh, apply, change the number on, on the template. So for example, I think that's where they're going with, so I can do K, apply, uh, deploy. In this case, it did one, so I can do V and deploy. Yeah, on this is where part, you can also do it like this in the exam. If they give you a template or something to modify, you can do it like that, and then k k create right uh, is what you do. Dash f deploy dot yaml. What happens if I do create dash f deploy dot yaml again? What would you think it have will happen? Anyone? Would it work or it would not work? I hope it gives an error, but I don't know. <laughs> it shouldn't change anything. Should it? Would I would I get an error in the in the executable, or would I get uh, a message? Um, oh, that's a create though, right? Yeah, I just created it, so I'm trying to create it for the second time. Yeah. It'll give you an error, right? So if you do. Yeah. With apply, you don't get it. Yeah. Uh, you don't get it where? Uh, when you use apply, you don't get the error, but with create, you would. Yeah. So now you know why error, when you see all the tutorials, right, they use deploy. 
I don't know why you line. ever use create outside of imperative. Yeah. Yep. So I deploy is, um, yeah. So create is there because of the HTTP, right? It's a, it's a put. Um, and also you can see the, the verbs. So don't go, don't get scared if you see this and you create and, and deploy. So, um, if you're not sure, just, just go with apply, like Eric said. Um, what else? Uh, so in this case, it created our replica sets, right? So now we have a replica set for the Apache stuff for the NGINX. Um, let me see what else. Um, it says to delete it. We can delete them. Um, if I want to do, if I want to delete both deployments, what would I use if I want to do it in a single command? Put spaces between the names. Apache and NGINX. Is that correct? I don't know. I meant the whole thing, but yeah, yeah okay. it works. <laughs> uh, another shortcut is you can do dash uh, all. It will de delete all the, the resources in that namespace or uh, default, right? Or you can do dash capital A and it will delete all the deployments in any namespace. I did not know that. Actually, dash all. My bad. My bad. Um, so yeah, if I don't, I don't feel like typing names, uh, you can do it like that. That's, uh, that's how you write your shell scripts to clean up stuff. Just that's your clean up, clean up .sh. <laughs> I just put everything in a namespace and <clears throat> delete the namespace, like Mohammed just said. Yeah, because that's like yeah. your mom. <laughs> but how do you deploy? Ah, oh, yeah, delete the namespace. That's right. Uh, sometimes, yeah, but sometimes you want to delete uh, certain resources. Sure. Um, let me see what else they're saying here. Um, well, I don't have pods now that I can do, but uh, P -P -O, get POW is like something to watch uh, as things change changes. Um, I think this was an example of like changing the the thing fast that you can actually see uh, the the changes of like um, some pods terminating and some pods coming up. Um, let me see where it goes into the rolling rolling up uh rolling strategy so when you have a um i can deploy it again let's see if i can find it we can deploy in genx uh so dash w the verbosity work with watch so like we can see all of the commands that are happening too or is that a separate thing uh sorry uh watch it would only like if i do that and do k get pods dash w uh, basically, does does a watch on pods, but you can put. You said like you want if you want to have deploy like this. He was saying if you put a verbose oh. on it, and it does. I'm doing it right now. It does. It shows the. Uh... Oh yeah, dash v six. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. So a watch is what. It's like doing a get, on. On namespace default pods question mark. Um, I don't. I don't think this this matter that much, but the thing is, watch watch equals true. Uh, and since nothing have changed, you don't get a uh, response back. Um, but you can increase the number of replicas. I don't know if we uh, we have the the smart right i can set it to scale and then watch they run they, they create too too fast yeah you need <laughs> two terminals when yeah you need two terminals yeah, put it in mine and it actually holds that socket open right yeah 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 it wouldn't it would not exit right so if you do yeah. dash w it stays it stays there uh waiting for the server side to give you back um, more information. Um, so that's kind of like how also similar like informers work, right? Controllers. Um, and you create a cache um, informer uh, to get informed when things things change in etcd. 
Uh, so you're getting information from SCD and it get populated to Cube API and the Cube API sends you the message back. Um, so, um, oh yeah. So the thing that I think uh, it was, uh, it was case set image, right? If we want to switch it to that um, and we want to run, and maybe that's the one that we can run very fast. Um, see that one, it was saying, some some pods are terminating some pods are being created so the default strategy is um and also i don't know if in the sam you will have you can use the watch command that i like this one better because you you get actually like a, like running a command multiple times and then you see it change So you can, I can do like latest, right? And then in here, you can see like these things being created. I think this is a better view, right? You saw some of them being created, the other one's still running and so, and so on, and the two, everything gets running. So that's the ro um, uh, rolling, running update. Also, there's a strategy like recreate, like it says here, recreate will be like, Go ahead and delete all the po all pods from the last revision or the revision that I'm going to apply, and then create the the new pods. Um, so that's will be a recreate uh, strategy, and that is done because there might be the situation where the application cannot be running two versions at the same time. So the rolling updates, what you have is like uh, you have maybe V1 and V2. There will be pods of V1 and V2 and the clients are connecting to an app that is the old version and the new version, or you have V1 and V2 connecting to a database um, and doing changes, read and writes. Um, so if there's a change of schema or databases, that's maybe sometimes when you want to shut down one version and bring the other one, which will give you a, a downtime. Uh, you, need, you need some downtime for that. So yeah, and the book ex explains also the rolling update um, is the type Running update is the default um, strategy. Um, I don't know if it's, um, let's see, okay, deploy, Oyamo. If, if they put the type here, oh, here it is. So if you create the a deployment and you don't specify anything about the strategy, this will be the default values. It will be type running update, uh, max search of saying like how many, how many, uh, new apps do I need to create on top of the ones that are running? And then, but saying uh, I the max that can be unavailable are are 25%. And then with those numbers, we'll do a running update. You can change this to, I think it's recreate, like it says here. So in the exam, they change, they, maybe they, they ask you to change it to recreate or going back and forth. Then you can make it recreate where you, you can just like, um, remove running update or I guess you can leave it there. It gets ignored. Um, if you're not, you're not sure, you don't remember like what is the, the, if it's re, recreate is, is written with um, capital R or what are the options that you put there in the book that uh, chat put a something like we mentioned before, you said K, K explain, right? Uh, deploy, deploy dot spec dot strategy uh, and it will give you the options that you can put here right um, recreate and running update um what else um yeah and this explains of um how to do roll rollback so if you're in the new version see if we did the change uh so actually i think i did a bunch of changes i did three changes um you see it there, but also you can do uh, get rollout. So it starts talking about rollout. So you can do roll, k rollout um, history. I need to specify deployment. Um, since I don't have one deployment, it will show for Apache. It shows that I I did three revisions um, for for this deployment, and since I I didn't put a a reason or annotated, uh, they come like that. So that's why he's showing here. Um, also you can annotate, right? For example, 
uh, here is one example where you can annotate the deployment Apache and the annotation is change cost and then you set it to two and then if I do it see the what's, what's latest but you're annotating that one if you want to annotate a specific one well that's I think that's uh that touch revision um and then if I want to go back you can use undo for example roll out undo deploy Apache and then you will go back one so if you show the history, now you can see that we went back one. And then this is three, right? So two is not there anymore. If they're, if, if they're the same, um, then they're, they're, this, this one is the now, this was none, but this is the one that is active now. Let me see what else is here. Uh, okay, I don't take deploy Apache. And then if you want to annotate it, the last one, you can say annotate. So I, I don't remember seeing the exam things about annotating. I was saying like rollback, uh, history and such. Um, oh, here it is, it's better. So you can annotate those things, the one that is active now. See, this is, this is the one, the last revision is the one that is um, active. For example, revision four. And there was one that said about what's using that stash revision. Oh, here it is. So you can get the status uh, on this. And there's no revision. I think it's for successfully, successfully rolled out. Status deployed Apache. And then, and then this, I believe that rollout status is something that as you're doing an update, this is a non-blocking command and it will stay there and it will exit when, when it's done. Does somebody remember, remember that? I think um, I'm gonna do it now because this app deployed so fast. See if then the help, they put something like that. Yeah, it will it will it will watch. It will do a watch. See, it will watch the status of the latest rollout until it's done. So this is a typical if you used to or today you do like imperative deployment, something like in CI in Jenkins, and you do like a set image or something like that, then you will need to run rollout status just in case in your script you want to like uh the job stop the job from finishing um, when the deployment is like done. So you can do like rollout status, and then it would just block, um, and then you can get um, like uh, the result of that. But it's just blocking, so it, it will watch uh, until the deployment is done. So if something that takes like maybe ten minutes or five minutes, depending how many how many pods or or how much the pods get to deploy, you will. You have that. Um, oh, and then this one is um, you can pause, like leave it between them. Let me see how many I have get pods. Get pods. Um, this one has um, six, so it's, it's saying to run the two commands uh, back to back to set the image and then do a rollout. Uh, pause. So you have to run it very fast because these things. Um, let me copy the the next one. So let me do this, and then it's pause. So now you get the the rollout status, right? Is kate rollout status deploy Apache? It's just waiting for the deployment, and it will. So it's only three out of six. So if we do get pods, this one, there's like three that got deployed. You still have one, two, three, four, five of the old version. So it could be in the exam, you can get a question. I'm not saying that you're going to get it, but you can get a question of like, go to this deployment and 
troubleshoot uh, why the all the pods for the new version are not uh, ready, right? Are not running. And then you can like with these commands investigate, oh, somebody ran pause, right? Um, and then you can say, well, to resume, you can run the command to resume, which is um, resume. Yeah, K okay, rollout resume Apache. And that will be your, oh my bad. Let uh, me do it like this, rollout. Resume, resume, or let's restart. No, resume, it's like resume where you were. Restart would ju just restart the whole thing over. Um, so this is also like, uh, res I use restart a lot to bounce what, what it's called, bounce the pods. So like if you make a change and you want to bounce the deployment um, or something like that, just because you're troubleshooting. Uh, so Apache deploy Apache. And then if we check the pods, you can see now that they're continuing deployment. So this could be something that can come in the exam on either like telling you to pause something or resume something or or get this the revisions or rollback, right? For example, or undo, um, which is the, the rollback, or 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 jump to a specific revision, which can be a hard question, but you can also like jump over instead of going back one, you can say, I want to go to revision something um i think undo is takes a, a revision right for the uk now i'm curious to know to find out roll out uh history pause resume restart status undo so undo that touch help you can put to which revision do you want to go to right so if you don't specify to re to revision like we did, it just went back default to the last revision. So zero means the last revision. How many you want to jump back? Zero, which is go to the back, or jump two, which is one, jump three, which is two, and you can jump back. So you can say which which one you want to jump to. Let me see what else what options are here. And again. When you're in doubt or you're like not sure, uh, always just help. And then at the top, you always will find some useful examples. So in here, you will see an exact example of like undo uh, instead of a deployment, right? If you're dealing with a daemon set, you will specify daemon set, right? And then the name of the daemon set. So it doesn't have to be a deployment. And then to which revision do you want to go uh, back to? Um, so you will go to revision three. Which that get me confused on the default equals revision zero, which is the last revision. So if you put revision, ah, I see. So if you put, I, I said incorrectly. If you want to go to the last revision, then you put zero. So this is not an offset. This is just like a key number, like zero, because it takes a number. So instead of putting negative, they should have used negative one. But anyway, it's not an offset. <laughs> <laughs> it's zero, but if you want to go to a specific revision, then you do K rollout history, right? Um, de deploy Apache, and then you put the exact revision that you want. And as you can tell, revision would never be zero here to avoid, avoid that confusion. Does that make sense? Or oh, we lost someone. Uh, somebody jump up uh, off the truck on this section. Okay, continue or not? Yes, please. This is really nice. Okay. Um, what else is in this channel in this section? I um, I have one question. I yeah, I missed the second revision. What happened to that one? Um, Oh, um, did we undo that one? No, uh, number two. When when the when the revisions are identical, they just get deleted. So you don't mm. have duplicates. So you can go to this. They're unique. <laughs> These revisions are unique. When you have like things that are the same, um, they just get they don't get listed. Like, but it's still a revision, but it doesn't list it as a new number. Interesting. 
Oh, it was there before, but since you made you made a change, um, mm -hmm. then and you reverted back to something, then that became the last one. For example, maybe two was there and you went back to two. Mm -hmm. So the fifth revision is the one that is active, Excellent. and then two is the same. Yeah. So yeah. two gets dropped, and that becomes that kind of becomes five. For example, it creates a confusion if I try to go back to two when I yeah. have five as well, right? Yeah. 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 Um, you see our, oh my God, this is, this is why, um, uh, we nerds like to talk about Kubernetes it takes all, um, we charge for the hour, I guess, um, not for the job anyway. Um, this one is interesting on exposing deployment. I think this is the last session that we are going to take, um, because I think, uh, there, there might be some, uh, something here for Chad to, to maybe update in the book. Um, and I will, I'll make the test with the audience here. So if I have, um, I think this was the NGNX one. So let me delete the deploy dash. Let me deploy all the uh, deployments. I don't want any deployments. Delete deploy dash, dash all, my bad. Right. If I do get all, it's empty. If I want to deploy NGNX, um, how do I deploy NGNX? Um, let me escape here. Okay, create, right, deploy, uh, nginx, that's why he's asking here, nginx, uh, dash, dash, dash image. Oh, wait, I'm confused. Uh, oh, no, yeah, N nginx, create deployment, nginx, dash, dash, image, nginx, right? That's normal thing, get pods, cannot type. Nginx. So if I want to expose a service on that deployment, right? Get deploy, get all. I have a deployment, nginx, and I have uh, my pods that have nginx. So if I do OK, edit, deploy, just as, a, and as, as an experiment in here. If I change the labels um, for the deployment, so let's say that I call this one app equals nginx deployment, right? On the on the deployment, you follow along. And then on the pod spec, I go down here and I change this to, let's say, yeah, let's leave it at nginx. Um, and then on the, so the match selector here, right? Is uh, pods that have an app, a label called app nginx and templates, I'm going to create pods that have that label, app nginx. Um, or maybe I do this to make it fun, right? So this is the label on the pod. This is the label on the deployment. Everybody good? Give me a thumbs up if you follow. Okay, so let's save it, right? And it says it's invalid, why? Deployment app in Genex is invalid. What's the error? Match expression. Why is it valid? It's not valid. Apps is not valid. Because I cannot use dashes in, in labels. Please somebody correct me. Let me see. It's complaining that it's not valid. Why is it not valid? I'm trying to do something here. Field is immutable. Field is immutable. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. I cannot change this on the fly. Fine. You want to be like that. So let me see if I can do it in a, in a different way. Or I just explain what I wanted to show. Actually, I'll leave it like that, right? So. 
if I do get pods dash dash show labels, right? I'll, I'll do it in a different way. We have app equals nginx. Um, I should be able to at least annotate the deployment, right? Annotate deployment nginx with, I don't know, full equals bar. Yes, OK. So if I do OK, get uh, deployment, right? Dash dash show labels. Uh, I thought I uh, annotated the deployment. I cannot annotate deployments. That's super weird. So let me let me try again. So I want to try. So let me create. How do I create the YAML and myself edit? So create deployment dash dash dry run. Do I put client or server here? I'll just put client. We go with something PC. Right. This is the YAML that I have. I put deploy like we did before. But YAML, if I want to edit, uh, what I wanted to do was just add another another label here. So let's say full dot bar, right? I should be able to create the deployment, create the dash F deploy, deploy that YAML. Okay, get pods. Yeah. So if I do get, get uh, deployment show labels, it has two labels, up and GNX and full bar. If I do get pods dash dash show labels, this one has uh, app nginx doesn't have full bar. So if we want to expose a service, um, what we'll do is run k expose and then put that into a YAML file. Actually, we don't have to put it in a YAML file. I don't think we have to put it in a YAML file, but we'll put it in a YAML file. Right? Um, if you don't know what k expose do, you can do k expose. Um, uh, dash dash help and there's a ton of examples in here at the top as you can see there's different ways that you can expose but what i'm doing here i'm creating a service to finish with this one uh nginx right nginx and g if i can type nginx right it says i want to create a service it has these two labels App Nginx full bar. Um, so as you can see, when you did the K expose deployment, it took the labels from the deployment and put it in here. Then it says, I want to export port, um, uh, port 80, uh, target 80, and then selector equals app Nginx. So in this case, if in here it says, Selector needs to be a label that is on the deployment. Use the selector field to attach to deployments, which with the label app nginx. So that means if I go here and I change this one to foobar, that's a label, right? We saw it's a label on the on the deployment. And we save it and then we apply it. K apply dash F uh, nginx service, right? I have a service. So if I do okay, get service and type get service, right? It's here. It's nginx service and it's on port 80. And I'm selecting I'm selecting uh, deployments that have the, the selector app equals nginx. So if I do, um, I want to see just to verify just for um, just to, to, to test here, what would be the command to check if that service is working? Well, there's two commands actually. There's K, what would I do in that service? Something command on the service. Or I can just tell you, uh, what the command that I use all the time is get EP endpoints. 
because what the service is doing is looking for the pods that match the service selector and will give you the IP address match with this. So if you're having trouble and you don't have any traffic, but you have pods and you have a service and everything looks correct because you put the right label for the deployment and you do get, get EP, you get, uh, and you put, let's just put um, NGINX and the service to for, make it clear for people. Okay, get EP is get endpoints. Um, and then you put NGINX service, right? It says endpoint equals none. And you will spend maybe a day figuring out why I don't have endpoints. Why, why do I don't have endpoints if I have everything correct? If I double check, like, let me see, I have pods. Uh, yes. Uh, do I have deployments with the right labels? Yeah, full bar. If I do K okay, describe service, and this is another trick service it does something some magic that it doesn't give you the yaml it actually like gets the endpoints and it says uh it says in here endpoints equals zero it would not be in the yaml but it will be in describe it says zero and the selector is full bar why it's not working in the book it says put the deployment labels in here so deployment has this label and the service has selector these labels. Why I don't have endpoints? Why is my application not getting any traffic? Anyone? Or somebody the, answer in the, the chat? The label is wrong. Why is it wrong? It's full bar. I don't have any typos, I think. Full bar, full bar. Cluster, if somebody says cluster IP type. No, I think that's yeah, correct. Yeah, cluster that... IP, uh, maybe we need to put uh, type load balancer or no, that's uh, not any external type. No, that's not the problem. Because it's, uh, you're creating a service um, and maybe you're, um, yeah, you're creating a service and service should be able to get endpoints, nothing to, no balancer or no port. Which I, I, I you're correct. Uh, in terms of your troubleshooting, like if a low balancer problem or no port, yes, that will be something to look at. But in this case, I don't even like this service is not finding even like uh, pods. Why is it not finding pods? Anyone else? Uh, should we include both labels, full bar and ah, app nginx? Good. Our selector is not. So if I do nginx and I put put here, that was that was a good that was a good option. So app nginx and I do k describe. Hmm, doesn't work, and I have both, and both are in the deployment, right? So if I do get get Deployment, that's show labels. That's both. Did you apply that change? Yeah, yeah, it's here. Service. You didn't. You just changed the YAML? Oh, the selector, my bad. Uh, then you I, didn't apply apply, I didn't apply it. You didn't didn't apply it. Apply yeah. Good catch, Eric. And that this happens, this happens often in exams that you do something and you waste yeah. 30. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Wait, that is minutes of like, why oh my this gosh. doesn't work? Why is it? Oh, I forgot to apply. Okay. So uh, deployment has that and then service. Ah, it doesn't. What could it be? What it could be. I think somebody said it already, no? No one, no one else wants to try? I heard my name, Ar Carlos and Argo at first. Yeah. Uh, yep. Anyone? How many people we have left? I oh, have 12. No one, nobody wants to leave until we know the answer. Want the answer? Who wants the answer? Tell us, Carlos. Yes. Service selectors are for 
labels on pods, not on daemon sets, not on replica sets, not on deployments, not on your K native, not <laughs> on pods, not on stateful sets, on pods. And if I do K get pods, that's that show labels. The labels on the pods is what? App in Gen X. It has the replica set hash, but the important one is this one. So I'm looking for pods. I don't care about deployments. I don't know. I don't care who created the pod. I can create pods without a deployment. And I can create a service that points to pods. So it's a relationship between service and pods. And that's something that I wasted a lot of time troubleshooting on to actually click on me. And that's something I guess tough people will remember now. <laughs> so let's fix it. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So if we remove this, right, uh, up he down here, selector is just app NGINX. We apply it. And we do describe service, and voila, we have here. Or me lazy get EP, which is my command. We have an endpoint. We have the, the pod IP address and 80. So this is a, just an errata for the book um, that chat needs to update. That is this attached to pods with label NGINX, not deployments in the book. That's a minor thing. Like that's, but, but it could be something that maybe given in the exam. I will put it in an exam. That's a question for a CKA at me. Because that's, that's going to like a something, you know, foundational that you need to remember when you're working with Kubernetes, you're just troubleshooting pods and probably like, doesn't matter how the pod got created. The, what matters is the actual running pod, like why it's not working. That's how you troubleshoot. Um, I think we can end here. I think the, the last part people can do it on the self, but uh, what was the last thing? Um, yeah, draining. And cordon, uh, do the exercises. I think those are very useful. Um, and then next week we'll pick up chapter six. Where's chapter six? What's chapter six about? Oh, that's me, uh, networking. Networking. networking yeah. uh, I think Eric's going to do it, right? Eric? Yep, I got that one. OK. And do pay attention to the section on this cordoning and not cordoning. Every time, I've taken this test twice, and it was on there in at least one or two questions, you had to do a bit of that. Yep. Just remember that, I don't know how to relate in this English words, but cordon is like, like nobody else gets in, like putting a fence, nobody gets in. Yeah, it's, I think of it like the, the velvet rope at the, at, the, at the bar or something. You can't go by unless you uncordon. Yep. And then drain is like, you want to get everyone out, like drain off. Yep. Um, uh, I think that's those are the two things for for that one. Yeah. So there there was a question. I know we're over time, but there was a question in the earlier in the chat. I put it into the document. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've I've got too many freaking windows open now. I can't find it. Uh, it was there. We go. Uh, Faisal. He uh, you know he noticed you mentioned crossplane and just um. Uh, I don't know if we need to answer here, if we want to answer this in Slack, but just uh, thoughts on cross vein, cross plane versus Pulumi versus or from what, you know, managing infrastructure stuff. So it's not really CKA related, but I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Anyone's thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I I do I I do. Um, uh, I miss uh, is Faisal still here, or he left? No, he's just a login. Okay, yeah, let me start the recording. I don't want to make this long. Uh, we'll see you folks next uh, week on the answer.